this target, it doesn't matter, then it will just detect that the mostly clean target was not run. By the way, the mostly clean target should also remove the stamp file for uh, the package build. Because if the build system doesn't detect that the stamp file for the build has been removed, then it will just assume that the mostly clean target failed and it will run, uh, it, it will clean the whole directory uh, and all changes that you may have made. So if you, if you want to make some manual changes at this target. Then uh, there are some other extra targets uh, because sometimes you don't, uh, you not only want to have a binary package, but uh, the package may also contain a library which contains development headers and extra files. And uh, these may need to be accessed from other packages as well. So you want to copy them to, into the staging directory then, where, as I said, the tool chain lives. And uh, there are some standard targets here which are called compile targets and clean targets. And you can basically hook any, uh, any extra makefile targets into, into these uh, targets by adding a de dependency. And compile targets will be run directly after the normal build process. And clean targets will be run directly after uh, the make clean has been run either by running mostly clean or by running the normal clean process. And uh, what you user usually do is uh, on the extra target added to compile targets, which we mainly call install dev, um, you, can, you, you will just run the necessary make commands to install all development related files into the staging directory, usually by just running make install on the source directory. And the same goes for uninstall dev, except that for most source packages, there is not a make uninstall target, so you should remove them manually by adding rm lines there. Um, now to the final part of this lecture, uh, some short notes about the structure of the build route, because sometimes you not only want, wish to port packages, uh, but also create a deriv derivative version of our build system or just integrate some packages that you may wish to submit to us so we can include them. And, or if you just want to port it to another platform, you need to know some basics about the structure. Um, there are several source directories which uh, we use. The first one of which is, is Toolchain. You usually don't need to change anything in there. It contains all the build instructions to fetch uh, the kernel headers, the bin utils, the C library, and of course the compiler itself, and additionally also the debugger. Um, most of the time for porting a platform, this is not needed, except if it's a completely new architecture, then you may want to add a configuration for the C library there. The second source directory is package, which contains all our main packages, but uh, not all of the packages, only the ones that do not depend on, uh, speci on specific kernel tree features. So if you're, if you're building a kernel module, you uh, usually put it in the next directory, which uh, are, is called target, and this directory contains all the build instructions for both the firmware image generating process and uh, the kernel building process itself. Another additional directory is the scripts directory, uh, which, where you can put uh, some extra scripts that you may need for several packages at once. You will find uh, this, uh, the Perl script in there that does the download and uh, some other IPKG related stuff. Um, there are also some important directories for the actual build process, which are generated at runtime of the compile process. Um, these usually correlate to some of the source uh, directories. For example, the toolchain build directory, uh, the arch here is replaced by the architecture that you're compiling for. So on uh, White Russian, the standard is toolchain build MIPSEL for MIPS little endian. Uh, this contains all the source directories for the toolchain related build. So it is only used at the initial generating of, of the, of the toolchain, 
And later in the process, you don't really need it anymore, but you should keep, keep it for the build stamp files. Um, probably the most important directory is the staging directory. This is where the build system collects the pre-compiled tool chain uh, and all libraries. I've talked about this directory briefly before. Uh, this is also the main component of the software development kit. So if you don't need the build system at all and just want to compile some packages, you will find uh, all that you need in there. The whole tool chain, the libraries, the development headers, all this stuff. And then the last important directory is the build directory. This is where the kernel is built, all the packages are built, basically everything that lives in package and target directories. Oh, I explained this already. <laughs> Um, another thing, uh, the target directory also generates the image builder and the software development kit is generated by package. Now this is uh, an excerpt of the actual output of the make process in our development tree if you don't enable the verbose options. Uh, it will actually show you in what part of the build process it's in. So if you run a make process, it first starts off by installing the tool chain, which calls some extra targets later. So um, the, the second line in here says tool chain kernel headers prepare. This means that it runs the prepare step of the kernel headers directory. This kernel headers directory doesn't actually have any other useful uh, targets. Uh, and basically all what this does is it unpacks the kernel headers required for the compiler build. The next step is to prepare, compile, and install the bin utils. Uh, by convention, uh, the, the standard uh, things that these targets do is prepare, unpacks the source directory, uh, then applies all patches, and makes sure that make knows about the status of the package. And the compile target uh, builds all the binaries in there and also builds the packages if they are present, which they're obviously not in the tool chain. But uh, another thing that it does, uh, as I explained previously, if you want to install development files into the staging directory, uh, this is also done in the compile step. And the last step, install, um, has a kind of a special meaning for the toolchain directory in that it doesn't really embed any packages into the firmware image, which it would do in any other directory. But in, uh, in this case, it just installs uh, the toolchain related part into the staging directory. So uh, if you look at this part of the excerpt, the standard process is first unpack the kernel headers, then build the bin utils, then prepare the GCC. Actually, preparing the GCC in this case means that you build the so-called initial GCC. Uh, the initial GCC is, uh, it, it can only create statically linked executables, and it is only intended for compiling the C library, which we'll use later. So uh, it then generates the initial GCC, and after that, starts compiling and installing the C library. Uh, and after that, when it has generated the C library, it will, uh, it will build the final compiler. This is actually a necessary step in the tool chain building process, because if you don't have binaries of the dynamic loader and linker ready, then the compiler cannot create, uh, uh, then the can compiler cannot be created to target the actual C library. Now the second part of the build process involves preparing all, uh, everything for compiling packages by compiling, actually compiling a Linux kernel. Many packages uh, don't actually depend on specific versions of the kernel, but nonetheless require an already compiled kernel image because of some header issues. And um, this is what all this does. It, it first calls the prepare target in, in, in the target slash Linux directory, uh, which in turn compiles 
the the actual kernel image. Uh, in this in this case, it's it is different differentiated between Linux 2.4 and Linux 2.6 because at the moment we only keep one version of each in our build instructions. So. Uh, if our Linux 2.6 kernel is set to the latest 2.6.15 kernel, then all boards that we have target this kernel. And all the build instructions for the instructions for this version are in the target Linux, Linux 2.6 directory. Um, then the next step is to prepare all the tools that you need for creating the target image and uh, actually compile the Linux kernel here. The, uh, the order of, of these targets may be a bit confusing, but uh, if you actually uh, look at what these targets does uh, do, then it should be relatively clear. Okay, the, ne the next step is to run the compile target in the package directory, which will call all the compile parts of the individual packages, at you, which you will see later. So it starts off by building the base files, busybox, and some other packages. So this will uh, actually generate all the IPKG files, which you can install later. And now to the final step of uh, the build process, which also kind of concludes my lecture, it cleans um, the root directory, which it, it keeps, because the standard process is if, if it embeds all the packages into the firmware, in, into uh, the firmware image, it needs to build a copy of the root file system first in a directory. And if you have changed some of the configuration, then uh, the package selection has also changed and you need to regenerate uh, this copy of the root directory. So the first step before doing any actual package installation is to remove this temporary directory. And then it just installs all the packages that were selected by calling the install targets. And then the final step of this whole process is to install the Linux kernel and all its modules into the uh, directory which keeps track of, of the root file system and uh, uh, the uh, extra files that are needed to build the firmware image. And uh, then you can also see a, spe a special directory called target Linux package, which I haven't mentioned before. Uh, this is where all the, uh, the uh, package directories for kernel specific stuff live in. So. Uh, if you're, if you're building an, a kernel module which is not included in the kernel tree, then you can add the build instructions to target Linux package, which works much in the same way at, as the original package directory. And the last step of the build process, of course, is to install everything and generate images, which is what's, what target Linux image install does. And after that, the build is complete. <laughs> uh, we still have some time left for questions. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes, over there. Uh, the microphone is over there. Um. Yeah, I'm a happy user of OpenWRT, so thank you. Um, my question is, um, uh, you probably know about Open Embedded, and when I look at the, your software development kit, it looks very, uh, yeah, very much the same as the Open Embedded stuff, which is used for PDAs and which was used for the Mesh Node, uh, Mesh Cube, and even for DVD recorders and such stuff. So for Embedded Linux. Um, is there a reason why you uh, did develop, uh, I mean, some kind of reinvented the wheel? Uh, mm. or, well, so. uh, OpenWRT, when OpenWRT started off, uh, it was, I, I think, kind of never uh, considered to use the open embedded stuff. I, I don't know how ready it was back then, uh, but basically we started off using the UC Libc build route and uh, kind of went on developing from that. 
and there was some discussion, uh, discussion about whether we should use Open Embedded or not.